No matter your experience, I'm gonna make off-camera flash easy and a lesson you can learn in less than 10 minutes. Hello, my friends. My name is Pai. Welcome to SLR Lounge. This is your place for no-nonsense photography education. And with that, we're gonna jump straight in. So look, the lesson is off-camera flash, and I feel like people make this subject incredibly complicated. It doesn't need to be. In fact, we're gonna break it down into a simple framework. The framework is called CAMP. Now, I developed this framework because I find that too often we approach flash from a very complicated manner of trying to do too many things at once. CAMP stands for composition, ambient light, modify, then photograph. So the first step in off-camera flash is not to think anything about flash. It's composition. I want you to think only composition. So here, I'm gonna grab my camera. Now for this shot, I'm gonna use a 24 millimeter prime. This is the Sigma Art on the EOS R and I have the uh, adapter for it. So I have Chloe. Chloe, come on in. She is our model for this shoot. We're gonna link her up so you guys can follow her by looking in the description of the video. So thinking from a compositional standpoint, what I love about this is the sun is backlighting the scene. It looks absolutely incredible. There's actually a little junction box or thingy that Chloe can sit on. So Chloe, why don't you go ahead and sit right there? Now I'm gonna take a natural light shot first, okay? I'm not even gonna worry about anything. My camera settings are set to 1 250th of a second, F1.4 and low ISO, okay? And I'm gonna take this shot right here and honestly, this actually looks pretty cool just as a natural light image, but you're probably looking at it and going, this is supposed to be a flash tutorial. Composition first, don't think anything else. So what I actually want is I wanna lower myself down for this shot. I wanna utilize this wide angle lens to kind of exaggerate Chloe's position, her pose, and to kind of feature her in this scene. I'm also framing her right in front of where the sun is. So we have this natural sort of vignette and she's kind of backlit nicely by it and framed with the trees and grass and everything around her. This is the actual composition that I want. Okay, so we have our composition dialed in. Now we go to the next step, which is ambient light. It's very simple. Dial your ambient exposure to your intention for the photograph. Here's what I mean. A darker in-camera exposure is gonna require more flash power, right? That's gonna give you a more dramatic image. A lighter or brighter exposure in camera requires less flash power, and that's gonna give you a more natural and brighter looking image. So do you want dark and dramatic, or do you want bright and more natural? Set your intention by dialing in the exposure. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to, uh, I'm gonna keep this at 1.4 for my aperture. I'm gonna keep it at low ISO, and I'm gonna run my shutter speed up to decide the intention. I want this to kind of be uh, a darker image, a more dramatic image. I'm gonna use a lot of flash and I wanna really showcase the kind of background and everything. I'm also gonna do one other thing. I might as well flip my white balance over to shade since that's kind of what I want anyway. So I'm gonna flip this into shade so we get a better look straight out of camera. So I'm gonna take this shot right now. We're at 1 2500th of a second. We're at 1.4 and low ISO, okay? So now we get to the modify side. So the reason flash is complicated is because people try to do too many things at once. The camp framework is designed to give you a step-by-step -step process. You're controlling one variable at a time. First it's composition, then ambient light. Now we go to modify or add flash. Well, in this scene, we can't really modify the existing light. We don't have enough light to bounce into the shot, right? So what we're gonna do instead is add a flash. I'm gonna go ahead and put this Profoto A10 onto a MagMod cold shoe. This is just an easy way of getting onto a stand. The stand is a Manfrotto nano stand. And keep in mind, look, I'm a professional. I use Profoto because their stuff is reliable. I enjoy it. I appreciate the entire system and everything. But flash is flash. Use what you got, use what fits your budget. If you're aspiring into something like Profoto, then use what you have for now. I'm gonna go ahead and add an umbrella. You can get a $20 umbrella off Amazon. They're gonna soften up the light. Okay, now, pointing the flash in the umbrella, I'm gonna position the light source. We're gonna place it right here. This is where I'm gonna power this on. I'm gonna grab my remote and power it on. And this part is very easy. Look, set the remote and the 
flash to the same channel. So it's on channel one. That means if this is on channel one, they can both speak to each other. Now in channel one, you have different groups. Each of these different groups can be controlled independently. Right now I'm only using one flash, so it doesn't matter. Set it to channel one and A. Come over to the flash. Make sure the flash is set to channel one A. If not, change the group to A, change the channel to one. Now once this is set up correctly, you can simply press the test button right here and your flash is gonna fire. Now this is where I'm gonna put the remote onto the camera and take the shot. I'm gonna leave this at a high power setting because I'm darkening the exposure in camera so much, right? So start with a high power when you're going with a dark exposure in camera and then adjust from there. It's that simple. There's one other thing I wanna show you guys. So when you're using a shutter speed that goes above one 200 of a second, you have to turn on that little high speed sync function right here. So right here on the remote, if you press this twice, it'll go to high speed sync and you're good to go. Keep in mind that this is gonna reduce overall flash power, but it lets you sync flash to shutter speeds above one 200 of a second on your camera. So just know. So from here, we're just gonna test the flash power. Okay, I'm gonna take the shot. This actually looks really good where it's at. Again, we're starting with just a high power because the in-camera exposure is dark. But if it's not the way you want it, just dial up or down the flash power. Keep in mind, you can also bring the light closer to make it more powerful or bring it away to make it less powerful. But that will modify the quality of your light as well. But I love this. It looks fantastic. I'm gonna bring this flash or the camera just over a little bit. Now we get to the final step, photograph. So I'm gonna have you kind of bring the chin towards this side a little bit, Chloe and then brush the hair behind, and then bring that hand back down. I love that, right there. Yes, bring your chin a little bit more, turn the, just tilt the head back up right a little, a little bit. I love that. Now if we need to adjust the angle a little bit, we can. So I want a little bit less shadow, I'm gonna bring the light back just a tiny, tiny bit. Take your shots, have fun, move your angles, do whatever you want. This is where everything is dialed in and you're good to go. All right, Chloe, right there. Bring the chin a little bit this way, there it is. Yes, work the hands a little bit, bring the hands in the hair. All right, y'all, so that's it. Hopefully y'all enjoyed. It took me quite a while to come up with the camp framework, but I genuinely hope that it simplifies the process of using off-camera flash for y'all. Now, if you guys enjoyed this video, be sure to check out our entire lighting series on SLR Lounge. SLR Lounge is a platform that will fast track your entire photography career. So if you're serious, there's no better education available. In the meantime, if y'all enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up and comment below to let us know what you think and check out Chloe on Instagram. Otherwise, we'll see y'all next time. Peace.